Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be reviewing Bluecast's CR3A and X10 castable resins. Uh, we will also be mixing the Bluecast sharpenizer additive into our X10 uh, to assure maximum detail and sharp edges as some of these casts are going to have organic parts uh, and we want to assure that maximum detail possible. We will also be comparing the blue cast resins to the Resinworks 3D Violet uh, and we'll be throwing in a regular wax ring as a control. So these are the prints we got from our latest test between CR3A and X10 with Sharpenizer. Um, let's start with some of the some of the obvious points. Um, this model is probably the hardest model to print, let alone cast. Uh, you can see just how ridiculously thin and small all of these are. Um, we've actually printed one of these in another resin called Resin Works. This one turned out pretty good. Um, there's a few little flaw, little nicks and, and things like from supports. But but this one, as you can see, the difference, like the rings on this one are, are substantial and full, whereas this one is PC and thin. Like it's, it's so thin it's transparent and it just cracks, it's spongy. Uh, this is the CR3A, this one's the X10, and this one had, I would say it's slightly better, but not enough to be noticeable. Like, the difference between these is, is palpable. So this one is spongy and cracks, and it actually printed with, with this flap, so that this is a failed print. This one seems to have been successful, but it's so, I don't know, it's, it's not great. Just peel that off the supports. The other thing about oh yeah, so it's also warped. The other thing about this X10 compared to CR3A is that it's brittle. So like literally just a little bit of pressure and it it crumbled into pieces. Uh, that was not intentional by the way. <laughs> compared to this guy, the resin works. You know it's a little bit spongy, but it's also a little bit flexible. So I don't feel like I'm gonna break this one and I'm not gonna try. Um, all right, so let's do another comparison between these two. These were the definitely the larger models, and they they had a lot more heft. So I, I expected these to to print fairly well. Uh, in the X10, um, we had a, quite a bit of deformation here in the bottom, uh, mostly to do with my um, lack of skill when it comes to placing support material. But um, I mean that's that's something that if you do it right, you won't see. Um, I'll probably also try to fix this. I'll just sand this top down and uh, and snip this off, and it's probably salvageable. Uh, other than that, I think everything turned out really nicely in this one. It supported itself quite well. Uh, same on the on the CR3A. This one, again, a little bit of deformation, not nearly as much as, as this flap, uh, but this one's pretty good. This one's a, a size smaller, as you can tell, or a couple of sizes smaller. But overall, this was a very good, a very good print. This is the one that I'm, I'm looking forward to the most to see how well it casts, because uh, just because it looks physically big, as you can see inside, it's it's hollowed. So the wall thickness is, well, I don't know exactly. It's probably variable throughout, but you can see like some of it's transparent almost like especially here on the especially there on the forehead of the small CR3A one so we'll make well hopefully all the metal gets to the places we want um, we'll probably see a better cast with the X10 that's what it's designed for after all um, but this will kind of be the the head-to-head -head, I think the best head-to-head -head comparison when it comes to the casting so let's look at these next two 
Uh, these ones I'm pretty excited to see how well they cast as well, um, although I would consider this one a failed print as you can see on the bottom. It, uh, the bottom jaw, or rather the teeth, just didn't print. Um, I think I might print or, or cast this one anyway. Uh, I'll just do some additive wax work on the bottom to, to fill it in and make it look complete. Um, but as you can see by the structure of these, uh, this is the a, a structure where I think the X10 will excel uh, because this is very crucial that every little bit burns out so that the metal can travel up these channels. Um, I'll, I'll pay special attention, of course, to, to make sure that they are sprued identically so we can get a good comparison. So let's look at this next one. This is uh, a ring design of my own that I did. And as you can see, it's supposed to mimic a corset, like a lady's corset. Uh, the This is one I, I don't expect will have too much problem casting in either one. Uh, it Just the design and the way I've, I've done previous casts, I feel like it's heavy enough that the metal is gonna get everywhere it needs to go. Uh, same as on the other ones, a little bit of deformation here on the bottom, but nothing I can't sand away. Yeah, I expect this one to turn out pretty nice. And lastly, let's look at this one. This one was uh, it's more figurative, as you can see. These ones are actually identical in size, which is good, so we have a direct comparison. Um, more so on this one as compared to the big guy the big skull. Um, this one's so thin, you can see it's pretty much transparent, especially down here. Especially down here. And uh, I don't think this one's as translucent, like just the resin itself, <clears throat> but it's probably equally as thin. So this one I'm interested to see how well it casts. You can see on the inside the negative, the negative space of the hollowing. And you can almost see through it. Like, Anyway, this should be an interesting one as well. Let's see how well that casts. So now that we've got all these, some of these successful prints, uh, let's get them sprued up and um, we'll do a cast tonight and hopefully everything turns out. So we're back, we've done the cast, and the cast turned out really, really good. Um, we did have a little bit of issue with burnout though. Um, it's getting hotter and uh, the, our setup isn't ideal right now. So we had a little bit of an overheating issue, an electrical thing, and it flipped a breaker. So we had to run the burnout longer than we intended uh, into the next day. Um, anyway, I don't attribute any of the issues that uh, came up with these to, to the burnout cycle. The issues are very, very minor. Uh, I would say they were more vacuum based and, and you know overall design things. I, I wouldn't attribute this to, to any of that. Um, anyway, let's dive into the direct comparison. So All right, so I've arranged everything from this cast in more or less uh, its groups. Um, over here is our resin works. These were older prints that have been sitting around for a while and um, we're, we'll talk about them in a second with relative to the others. Then we've seen these two, all these, these ones already, they were done in, um, you know, I did one in Sierra 3A, one in X10 to see how well the cast compared the two. Um, this one was actually done on a, a 3D Systems ProJet. This is like a quarter million dollar printer. Uh, and this one's solid, like there's no hollowing on the back. <clears throat> And then these two were done in Sierra 3A exclusively. So let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, so let's talk about these two because I have pretty much finished this guy to where I'd like it. Um, something to note when I did these is that I tried to sprue everything identically. So I put a great big one on the back, and then two small ones up to these um, to this jawline where it was very thin. And um, <clears throat> between the two, they, they cast pretty much identically. I didn't notice a single thing between the two that troubled me at all. Like even the little scars on the top printed this, cast the same. There was no bubbles, actually a little bit of bubble in there, but nothing major. Um, for the most part, in this case, these two cast identically. I believe this was X10 and this one was Sierra 3A. 
this one, these two actually had some, some issues. Um, as we saw before, uh, the smaller one was X10, and this one, the bottom jaw, didn't quite print. So in this case, I went and filled that in with wax. Uh, I wanted to salvage the piece because, um, you know, I, I'm making something and I wanted to have the direct comparison still. Um, this is how the teeth should be. They're, they're no prettier, obviously, um, but they're pointier and that's the way it should have been printed. So let's not focus too much on the teeth. Let's look from there up. Um, so on the X10, it's pretty much flawless. There's no bubbles, there's no, barely any print lines even, and everything burned out so cleanly, I don't hardly see, uh, I, I don't see anything to indicate. There's a little bit of a layer slip here, or shift rather, and um, yeah, no, this turned out really nice. One of the other things about the resin <clears throat> is that it, there's a slight bit of um, expansion in the when it's burning out because it is plastic. Uh, obviously to minimize that, it's formulated very specifically. Um, now they're both formulated for casting, so it's been thought of, but I think the X10 is a bit better for that. Um, when it comes to the thin stuff, if you have a, a resin that expands, the you might notice uh, some collapse in these cells, and you'll see um, like micro cracks where, where if the resin, uh, I guess it's not really resin, if the investment cracked, the metal will, will get inside that and create what looks like flashing. So we didn't see that in either case, but um, for this type of model, I would definitely pick the X10 as the normal for, for, me, for me anyway. Uh, these guys up here, so this is the resin works. Um, the one thing that I've noticed the, the most about resin works as an issue is that it doesn't cast well heavy items. It always prints them really nice, but it doesn't always cast well. So I felt very lucky that this came out. I kind of just threw this in because I've had this model model sitting around for a while and I wanted to see. There's a massive bubble in here that I'll have to fill. I don't know why it's perfectly square of all things and it was like inside the sprue so I couldn't see it. So I couldn't see it when I was initially cleaning it up, but um, I think it's still salvageable. I In this case it worked but for other previous ones that were even thinner than this, but you know, it's still considered a heavy piece, they failed entirely with resin works. For heavy things, I would recommend X10 because of the burnout. Now you're gonna have a bit of trouble printing it, but once you get that dialed in, it should be fine and it should cast pretty well. This one, I had no expectation to work. Uh, this one, as we saw before, the the, CR3A printed okay, not as well as this. This was in the resin works, and the um, what is it? And the and the X10 failed entirely. Like we we crushed it. It was so so thin. Um, I did kind of mess it up here. I'm gonna have to figure out how to fix that because this is actually hollow. There's little little bits inside that are rattling around. I think it might actually be a piece of um, shot from. Uh, from my tumbler, so uh, I had no expectation for this to actually work. I just wanted to see how it would perform, and it it actually came out. I thought this was going to be just like a printability test, because there's so many things to consider, and it's so tiny. Um, I never expected it to actually come out in metal, but I'm going to try to fix it, and, uh, and I don't know if anyone would ever wear it, but it's interesting nonetheless. And then this guy here, this was printed on a... This was one of our first experiments before we ever even bought our printer. We uh, we bought the model, we sent it out to be printed on a on another printer, and uh, I think it was a ProJet 2500? I, I don't remember the numbers. I never actually saw the machine or anything, I just got these in the mail. Um, but that one prints with... Um, it's it's very different. It's not it's not resin, it's not like FDM, it's more like, like an actual... like an inkjet, almost? but it's printing like micro layers. The, the model itself is printed in purple and uh, the purple is the castable material. The white, it, the other material is white and it's actually uh, dissolves in alcohol. So you can put this in like an ultrasonic and it's exa printed exactly as is encased in a white block. 
and then everything else dissolves. So you get none of those like little lines from, uh, from supports, things like this, like nothing. Now, obviously you're gonna have to sprue it, and I did, I think, the same as this one, here and here, and then you have to file all that off. So whatever good it does, it doesn't really matter. But, um, I mean, the quality between, let's say this guy, this one was done in Resinworks, is similar, if not better. So it's one of those like cost things, like what, do you wanna spend quarter million dollars on a extremely expensive printer that is incredibly reliable, it has great support and things like that, or if you are more into the hobby level and you just want a printer that will work, maybe Bruce SL1 will do, it's, I think the grand total for that was 2100 bucks with the CW1, the cleaning machine, um, or you can go as little as a Photon. Uh, photons are, I think, 200 bucks US and they work identically to a Prusa, so you just stick the resin in and pretty much the same profiles. Yeah, the difference, of course, is that the Prusa is going to get better support and um, it'll probably last a lot longer because it's mostly milled aluminum. But anyway, printers aside, we're talking about resin. Anyway, overall, I think these these casts turned out flawlessly, like really, really good. Everything totally, totally salvageable with very minimal work. I really wish that uh, Prusa would, would put a, a CR3A uh, print profile into their slicer, but for now I just use the X10 uh, print profile through the Prusa slicer and I, I just up the exposure time by two seconds. And it's worked so far. Um, my overall verdict, if I had to, to, to rate them all, all three of them, would be CR3A. For printability, reliability, castability, and cost. Then I would pick resin works for all of those above reasons. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, I believe, and I find that the detail is just the slightest bit muddy when it comes comparing the two CR3A to uh, resin works. And then I would pick the X10, um, but. If you were doing this as like a major casting house, you were only using X10 and you just learn how to use it more uh, and you're turning out, you know, gold pieces where 50 plus cents a gram for resin is a non-issue, then maybe X10 is for you. I, they all have their merits. They're all worth the time. Um, I'm just trying to look at it from a small business slash hobbyist type of perspective. Uh, what's the best bang for the buck type of thing. Uh, my favorite, if it wasn't obvious, is CR3A. Uh, I will be sticking with CR3A for the next little while. Unfortunately, due to COVID though, uh, I haven't been able to source more of it, so it's kind of become a precious resource. Um, whereas X10 seems to be more available. Go figure.